Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is incredible. You know, today I'm gonna to talk about something that's on my mind a lot. And the fact is, is that whether it is something really negative, like a problem with my mental health, or an animal is sick, or maybe something dies, those are the videos that typically do the best on this platform, which is a little bit of a bummer for me, to be totally honest with you. And uh, and I wanna kind of uh, see what we can do about that. I mean, can we change that up? Can we go the other way? Uh, what do you say we try? So what am I happy about? Now before we get started, of course you guys know that I deal with anxiety and mental health is nothing to take lightly and I certainly do struggle with it. With that being said, you can be anxious and you can still be happy. And trust me, there's a lot of things that I'm very, very happy about in my life. Take for instance BHB. I mean, it's been a lifelong thing of mine to work with reptiles. You know, I've been doing this for 33 years. It's crazy to think about it. And of course, this is a gravid piebald ball python. And that's the thing, right? Things are starting to heat up here at BHB. This is the exciting time of the year coming. Python eggs are coming. I know you guys are missing the egg time song. Well, guess what? The egg time song is not too far away. And this is gonna be one of our first girls that is actually gonna lay, which is exciting. I mean, I am so lucky to be surrounded by these these amazing animals and have the experience of being able to breed things like these ball pythons. And hey, how many people get to say they have a pet alligator like RJ that just chills out and hangs out with them? I mean, I've had RJ now for almost 10 years and uh, he's such a big part of my life and I can't wait to kind of incorporate him back into the Reptarium so that other people can enjoy him as much as I have over the last 10 years. And although we're deep into the python breeding season with ball pythons becoming grab and a lot of children spotted, Stimson's pythons being gravid, of course we're just getting started here in the next week or so breeding things like our rainbow boas, like this hypo Brazilian rainbow boa that's absolutely a ripper. He's gonna be bred to some het hypo females. He's gonna be bred to some normal females for some outbred. We have leucistic rainbows. We've got albinos that are up now. We have a bunch of different rainbow boas as well as other boas that are starting to breed like all our sand boas. You know, it's just exciting and that's something that really makes me happy, you know? Just kind of seeing the process, you know? When you start to dream about like what happens when they go together and then they start to breed and then they become gravid and then they either have eggs or babies. I mean, that is something that's awesome and I'm so, so blessed to be able to be around this every single year. And of course, then the colubrids are about to come out of brumation. This is one of the animals that actually won't breed this year, just not quite big enough, but all the adult colubrids are about to come out of brumation and they're in a new room this year. So that's gonna be kind of a challenging thing and just trying to figure out everything there. But that's really exciting that we don't have to drag them up the stairs and put them back in these enclosures that they actually are gonna stay in one spot. It makes our life a lot easier and it's super exciting because it happens pretty quick. Unlike the python and boa breeding season that can take months and months and months. I mean, you bring these guys out of brumation, you start feeding them within a week or so, they start breeding and within six weeks or so, you start getting eggs and then babies are just two months off so it's a really exciting time of the year and I'll be honest with you there are times where I literally just have to pinch myself to just see how many cool animals I have you know it's like you get into the grind every day and sometimes you forget to appreciate it right so every now and then I do just walk around whether it's at BHB or Reptarium and I just look at the animals and I think wow how amazing is it that we get to spend our life with these beautiful creatures? And of course, along with the colubrids that are coming out of brumation, so are all the leopard geckos, like this bold bell albino that is absolutely incredible. We're finding our leopard gecko group continue to you know, go in the areas that are the best for us. So we're not trying to produce the quantity of leopard geckos that we have in the past, just kind of the quality, right? We're gonna probably produce less leopard geckos than we did even last year. And last year we produced a lot less than we did the year before, but that's a good thing because we're producing the ones we really want to do and there's going to be some bangers that are coming out and that's that's something that certainly makes me happy and certainly one of the things that I love about my life is that I get to always be messing with something new there doesn't seem to be very many weeks that go by that I don't get something new whether it's for the Reptarium or BHB breeding project like this Gemma Cincta this little Boega this cat-eyed snake that is absolutely gorgeous it's just cool to be able to work with things that even after all these years I've never worked with and I really love this guy but there's a bunch of animals I'm 
always getting that I absolutely love. And those are the things that just kind of keep me motivated in life. I get to come in and be excited about it each and every day. And I tell you what, there is probably something that I don't talk about enough in the vlog, to be honest with you. And that's the fact that I have an absolutely amazing crew. I mean, I can't do the things here at BHB or anywhere if it wasn't for the amazing crew that I have. I mean, you guys certainly see the crew in the vlog and stuff like that, but none of this would be possible. I mean, I'm just one guy and I'm already a very busy guy at that. If it wasn't for the fact that I had all the people that are helping me here at the Reptarium, here at BHB in my offices, all the different areas, there's no possible way that I could do the things that I want to do. And that's something that I am forever grateful for. Look at how absolutely incredible Ivy and Aries are looking today. I mean, that animal is crazy. I mean, she is my spirit animal. She is my, my kind of emotional support animal. There's no doubt about it. And I love her to death. And you know, every day, every morning, I get to hit the upload button with you guys. I get to share my life with you guys. And that is something that really has changed me to the point that I can't even express. And I thank you guys for it because you guys are a part of it. If you weren't watching, commenting, supporting, doing all those things, I wouldn't be able to do the things I love. So I appreciate you so much. Oh, and speaking of uh, doing something for me, Valentine's Day is actually coming up. We of course have the e-Valentine's Day card. You can go ahead in the link in the description. They're literally $4.99 sense you can get them you can customize them we even have them black and white if you want to send them somewhere where they want to do their own color scheme to them uh, it's a pretty cool thing and it's really a cheap way to tell someone that you love them if you know what I mean like be my Valentine so again thank you guys so much for all that you do for me there's no doubt that the biggest life-changing thing that I've ever done that has really caused happiness even amongst all my anxiety and stuff like that I still can't tell you how many times I've walked around here super anxious but walked through and just been so grateful of the Reptarium. I mean, I can't believe, you know, it's been two and a half years since we opened up, but it feels like a lifetime. You know, it feels like I, I've had this my whole life and I am so grateful for it. I mean, I can't even tell you how life-changing it's been and how much happiness it brings me. And not only brings me, but brings me the opportunity to show other people these animals. And certainly, you know, Bella was where it kind of all started. Bella, come here, girl. Come here. Come see daddy. Come see daddy. That's my girl. That's my girl. Hi, baby girl. <laughs> it's just so crazy to think that a lizard would come to their name. And, and like I said, before the Reptarium even got going, obviously we had BHB forever, but Bella was kind of the first animal that was like, this is gonna be an animal I have at a zoo sometime. And I'm so grateful for her. I mean, she is absolutely wonderful. Every weekend, people love her and get an opportunity to spend time with her. And she is so incredible. And like I said, to me, she is probably the most special animal because of the bond that we have. I mean, the fact that, uh, again, a lizard comes to her name when you call her. She's just hanging out in the back, chilling out. And she's just like, all right, dad, I'll come over with some pets. And that's the thing that's neat. You know, some reptiles, we have a relationship where they know I'm gonna feed them, you know, like let's say Elvis or something, but her, she knows it's just about a relationship and affection, which is just something you don't really think about with reptiles. And there's no doubt this girl has brought me happiness more than I could ever express. You're such a good girl. Then you guys know that I'm gonna come into Ivy and Aries enclosure and talk about how this makes me happy. And like I've told you guys, you know, even through the worst times, there were days that I would just come in here, sit right where I'm sitting, and then Ivy is down here, Aries is over. Look at Aries is already coming up and just saying, hey, he saw me, he's coming up to say, what's going on? And I'm telling you guys, if I sit in here long enough, both of them would come out and actually crawl all over me. And that's just a special thing, you know what I mean? Again, like I mentioned, I know that when Ivy had a little bit of respiratory, she had that sickness, that video did very well, right? Because the title was like, my anaconda is sick. And I think that I get it, you know, people have a tendency to gravitate towards negativity, like, oh, I wanna see what's wrong, or, or when things are going bad, what's going bad? Or when I'm having a really bad, anxious thing and I'm talking to you guys, people seem to gravitate to that, or maybe share it or whatever the case is and I don't think that that makes you a bad person I just think that that's kind of human nature right and we've kind of been almost uh, desensitized to, to certain things and maybe even conditioned to look at negativity with the news and stuff like that but the truth is is that there's so much positive going on you know and even when I'm having anxiety or having anxious days I'm still happy I'm still positive I'm still grateful for the things that I have and and it's important and there's no doubt that Ivy and Aries are something that I'm beyond 
I'm grateful for. And like I said, I, I know it sounds crazy, guys, but Ivy really was a huge part of me getting better because spending time with her when I was in terrible shape made me feel happy. It gave me the relief I needed, even if that relief was only for a few seconds. So I tell you what, I love her and I love Aries too. And I'm so, so thankful that I have these animals. You know what's really crazy is that, again, working with reptiles my whole life, the truth is, is until we open up the Reptarium, we didn't realize the behavior side of things like we do these days, you know? Having these types of environments and just kind of, you know, interacting with the way we do now and training, I mean, that all happened in the last two and a half, maybe three years, maybe just before we started opening up the Reptarium, we started looking at the behavior side beyond the breeding and health of the animal, but actually the happiness, the enrichment of the animal, and just how amazing they can be. And so many animals really went from being cool animals to being extraordinary animals and the relationships that we've gained with these guys have been so absolutely breathtaking and I'm so grateful for that because if it wasn't for the Reptarium I don't think that I ever would have realized it right I've talked about the fact that I thought you could keep retics in smaller cages before but now I look at them and think man they really should be able to climb because I see them climbing every single day again I always say I'm not bashing anyone for keeping them any way they are I'm just saying for me personally I think retics need that extra space that climbing space and that's something that I've learned through the Reptarium. I'm grateful for not only having the Reptarium but also the fact that it's been able to teach me something that I didn't even realize I needed to know. The other thing that makes me happy about this place is that my vet is actually here and they're doing a scavenger hunt right now so their whole crew is going to be coming here to the Reptarium and doing a little scavenger hunt kind of you know meeting all the animals and in the end the really exciting news is my vet is actually moving next door literally next door to me. I'll be 20 feet away from my vet's office so uh, this is kind of her way to bring her crew here and surprise them about the fact that they're moving next door so uh, that's cool I mean the fact that we could do that type of stuff so we're gonna go ahead and have some fun in the scavenger hut right now Again, why do people gravitate to the negativity and can we change it as a community? You guys know I'm going to bring you on the good, the bad, the ugly. There are going to be days where there's bad news. There's going to be days that I'm struggling. There's going to be days that animals have issues. And I'm going to bring you on those journeys. But the fact is I want the majority of my vlog to be positive, upbeat, and happy. And I want those videos to outperform the negative videos, right? Because that's really the message. Even if I'm struggling, I'm trying to continue to inspire people. So uh, let me know in the comments what you guys think about that. What's your thought about this? whole topic is and stuff like that because I think we can do that I think that positive videos can perform just as well as negative videos and I want to make sure that I'm trying to put out a lot more positivity than I am negativity so let me know what you guys think so there it is guys let's stay happy together what do you guys say I hope that you enjoyed the positivity of this video and I really do hope that we continue to push it forward if you do you know a little more positive right over here is a playlist you can click on one or two of those videos that helps my channel positively grow I appreciate Get you up here you can subscribe to my podcast channel where i'll talk about all kinds of things on this side literally guys we are getting so close to three million hit that subscription button for me please turn your post notifications on have an absolutely wonderful day remember be kind to somebody and i promise i'll see you tomorrow